west side of town. Bobos and bazookas, me and my crew, we up the serious underground. Another day in the States, with the hell of five earthquakes, and the highest murder rate in L.A., Cali, 9,008. Can you relate? Just another day in the States, with the hell of five earthquakes, and the highest murder rate in L.A., Cali, 9,008. Good afternoon. Please take your seats. <clears throat> I would like to welcome you all here. Every year at this time, these this honor the ideas of freedom, neutrality, and Ready? humanity. I call your attention to a man sitting on death row right now in California. His journey from youth gang member to international street peacemaker is a remarkable one. His honest self-assessment while incarcerated led him to encourage youth not to follow in his footsteps. Should our world produce a broken soul, is it not our duty to let every man on this planet count? Remember his name. Stanley Tookie Williams. I used to be the king of the Crips. Look at my kingdom now. This is not a gladiator school. You will not prove anything in here. This place does not make you a man. Look at me! Hi. Hi. Sorry I'm late. I figured you had to shoot your way out of South Central. Dorothy. Just kidding. So, I read your proposal. A book about the formation of the Crips gang? Barbara, this is not you. Dorothy, I don't want to do another historical document. We're in the midst of a tragedy. 10,000 young black men died from gang violence in the last two decades, not including those injured or incarcerated. Yes, but how do we sell that? I don't know. You're an agent. That's your job. But something has to be done. Now, maybe my book could open some eyes. Barbara, this is not you. Dorothy, look, I'm a mother with a son possibly at risk. I don't know, but I have to write about this. This guy, Tukey, what do you know about him? Well, he's the animal who started all this. Can you get an interview with him? Tried. He's on death row at San Quentin. The murder weapon was an Ithaca 12-gauge pump-action model. Stock and barrel were illegally short. The first found behind the motel Gunshot counter. Gunshot to the head. Blast burns indicating a discharge Second at close range. Second gunshot entered in the back. Pierced the lung cavity. Burn marks Exiting on the, victim's the left dress sternum. indicate a very close Exiting range pellets shot. were embedded in the linoleum directly below the victim, indicating that the second shot was delivered from above. And how much was missing from the cash register? $120. One man dead in the 7-Eleven. Three others dead over $120. Prosecution rests. I have to... Oh, sorry. I have to lock up now. Jury, have you reached a verdict? Yes, we have, Your Honor. We find the defendant, Mr. Stanley Williams, guilty of all four counts of murder. Some up here is gonna kill me.
out your tongue. Bend over. Spread them. do for you, Miss Becknell? I want to know why Tukey Williams won't agree to see me. I couldn't tell you. I'm just his court-appointed attorney. I'm sure it's nothing personal. He hasn't talked to any reporter in 10 years. He's been on death row for 12. And what's his current status? Well, I'm not at liberty to discuss that, but I will tell you this. His chances to save his life are almost gone. All those going for exercise. Step to the front of your cell. Yeah. The assassin's set moving in on D-Block. They're taking the East next. Dropping jewelry, money, oh. Nigga, you know what AJF means. Huh? Amalgamated guilt formation. And that's what we are in here. We're 300 strong. But we gotta be as one. If not, the essays, the areas, they gonna be running shit in there. Understood? Don't nobody do shit in there unless I say it. Yeah. Tell the loose five meet me in the yard. Crips cooperating? He's got non-bangers on Crip blocks paying rent. He's got all the dealers paying taxes. He's got a finger on every mule that smuggles anything into this place. And we can't nail him on any of this stuff? So? Stop! Why are you playing this music so loud? You know I don't like you playing this misogynistic crap in this house. Charles! What? Where are you going? And pull your pants up. I'm about to go to Dad's house. Why do you have to dress like that every time you go to your dad's? You dress like a thug, you'll be treated like a thug. And then go happen, ma. Be careful. All right. All right. All those going for exercise, stand to the front of your cell. Uh 
Perfect. Throw them both in the hole. Williams can rot in there. Hurt nobody, you know he's crazy. If you use that thing with somebody, you use it on me. I do respect, man. Ain't your problem. Let's make it mine, then. Like I said, you want to use it on somebody, use it on me. Why are you trying to get involved here, man? Just stay clean. You want to use it, use it on me. Chill, talk. Come on. Come on. Coming out to the yard today, Mr. Pearson. Who's up? They call me ancient. Hasn't been out of the cell since he got here. I'd like to ask him if he wants to come out just in case. Never does. Says he's got everything he needs right there. Too bad. Welcome to Imperial Courts. Gates of Hell. Can I get you anything? A yoo-hoo? Something to drink? Oh, no, thank you. First of all, I ain't the one you gotta talk to about the book. You gotta talk to Big Took. He's our superhero. Our legend. Now, if he says we could talk, then we talk. Well, I have written him, but I, five times, actually, with no response. I... That's Dan. I'm gonna see what I can do. Thank you. What's all that, man? Il est mou. What? What you say? I said those are windows, young man. <laughs> Should try making some. Might set you free!
Mr. Williams. Mr. Pearson left these for you. Who's that? The ancient, down the tier. Those are windows, young man. Might set you free. Perception, to obtain knowledge of through the senses. Obsession. Detect, to find out or discover. Hearsay, opinion, contrary to the allegations. Repay what God you. sends is better than what men no ask. No revenge is more honorable than the one not the taken. The only known cure for fear is faith. Armani. Children have been the golden descended from the Edifying. sky. Landed on all We're all of us sentenced to solitary confinement inside our own skins for Watch life. cleave to the very thing that I as a black person could not afford for the romance of an innocence. An idea that is not dangerous is unworthy of being called an idea. One does not know, cannot know the best that is in one. Redemption. To extricate, to be released from debt, to make good. Redemption. Redemption. Mr. Williams, I am writing a book about the Crip Street Gang and their evolution into a world phenomena. As one of the founders of that gang, you could provide me with valuable insights into how the gang was created. Tony Bogart suggested I contact you again. He is well acquainted with my work. I intend for this to be a serious history, well researched, well considered. I do not intend to demonize you. You ready? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'm here to see Stanley Williams. Straight ahead. Thank you.
Please remove your shoes and place all personal items in the basket. Is this your first time, honey? Yes. Well, it gets better after a while. You get used to it. I did, finally. Except for the times when that red light is on. That's the chamber. When you see the red light, they're about to execute a man. That's one thing I never did get used to. Coming in. No further. Well, Mr. Stanley Tukey. Mr. Tukey. Tukey. I'm sorry. Is all this necessary? They think it is. All right. Wait a minute, don't you think you should ask somebody before you start doing that? Oh. I'm very sorry. Maybe I should Maybe you begin. could start by telling me who sent you here. Police, justice, FBI? What? I mean, is this like a smoke screen or something? You're trying to ask me questions so you can incriminate me? I have no intention of doing anything like that, Mr. Williams. You married Miss Beckman? I'm divorced. Kids? One, a son in college. College. So you are a college girl. MIT, University of Chicago. I graduated at Delphi. What do your parents do? My mother was a teacher and my father had a rather meager dry cleaning business. Your father bust his ass all his life, and the only way you can describe his achievements is meager? Why? Is that all? Why do you want to write this book? To find the truth? To hear it from you? But once you get the truth, what are you going to do with it? You see, I think that you just came down here so you can view the monster. Take notes on the monster that founded the Crips and then retreat back to your carriage trade and write about your disdain for gangs and gang culture and gang proliferation. You're not going to intimidate me into denying my disdain for gangs. But my personal point of view will not affect my ability to objectively write a book about the Crips. Come on, Miss Beckman, that's what all journalists say. They come in here and they feed me that story all the time. Took you, we're going to take care of you. Took you, we're going to do this and that. And then when they leave, you know what they do? They bury me. Well, I don't know they. I know why I'm here. I'm here to unearth the truth, your truth. You can't do that. There's no way that you can do that because my truth is completely different from your truth. So I don't believe that we can see eye to eye. You know what, Mr. Williams? The information is out there. It's called public domain. So either you can tell your story in your voice or I will tell my own story based upon my own point of view. It's as simple as that. So I suggest you look into my eyes and then you look into your gut and you see if you can trust me. Ma, you Asian lady call. Oh, thanks, baby. Mm -hmm. You have one.
new message. Hello. This call originates from the California Correctional Facility. You have a collect call from... Stanley Williams. This is coming in. These men have a lot of respect for you. Some. Mr. Williams, thank you for calling. I'm very pleased that you decided to trust me. No, I didn't say that I trusted you. But I'm giving you an opportunity for you to earn my trust. I respect that. Thank you. Well, first question. I want to know why you started the Crips. To protect my neighborhood. You started a criminal organization to protect your neighborhood? No, no, it wasn't criminal when it began. Uh, I moved to South Central from Louisiana when I was nine years old. It was thugs, it was bullies, other gangs. Mm -hmm. It was really dog eat dog. Cops and the K-9 division and all that, they really wasn't doing anything in our community to make things better. From that moment on, I knew I was on my own. So everything sort of took its own natural order. After the uh, dogs fought themselves out, then they would throw us into the pit, me and this guy named Monroe, and let us fight. And that's when I learned then that I had to be strong. You know, it was either I was going to be a victim or victimizer, so I had to gain my respect very fast, and I got my respect by making them fear me. And I didn't care who it was. I didn't back down from anybody. That's when I knew that violence was effective. I had to do the most savage thing possible on reflex. I never backed down ever. That's how I built my rep. A recipe for dying young. I guess that was somebody on the outside like yourself looking in, but in, but to us in actuality it was more survival, you know. Any dog can run and hide in the gutter, but uh, we wanted more than that. We? Who's we? Well, you know, our, our loved ones, our people, that we, our warriors that we gathered together. Loved ones, now, okay. This is when you met Raymond Washington. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's when I met him. Right. And, um... Did you did you fight with him? No, was there no, no, uh, turf war or? It was nothing like that. Uh, myself and Raymond felt that uh, we would get together, you know, and, uh, and gather up young warriors, you know, for our cause. Two. The Washington's coming. So what? Here you got 20, 30 young bloods getting some notice. Give them mile miles a run. The way I see what you run in the west side, we holding down the east side. You come together, you know that's something dangerous right there. But you know the west side's cool. But the east side rules. Nah, man. It's the east side that's cool. The west side. We both collected young groups of warriors around us. We cleaned the other gangs out.
you surround it. North, south, east, west. The thing is, is that, is that the Crips really became so powerful so fast that nobody really wanted to mess with us because they knew that we were going to mash other gangs, Avalon Garden Boys or Main Street Boys. They actually joined us rather than fight. You know, when I listen to you, I mean, it sounds like good, clean fun. I mean, you could really view it that way at times. There was fun, you know, uh, because it was really about brute strength, about a man versus another man who was the strongest, and we would mash on anybody. And then things changed once they uh, Go. started shooting. That would be the Bloods? Yeah, the Bloods. They shot first. Yeah. You shot back. Of course. I mean, just because we said we won, not she didn't mean that the enemies won. I mean, it was war. Yeah, but they're, they're not your enemies. I mean, they were other young black men just like you. This is my question, Mr. Williams. How can you possibly justify shooting a man who looks just like you? I think the core of it is an embedded sense of self-hate. What I mean by that is, is that anytime you spoon feed an individual derogatory images of himself and his race, after a period of time, they start to believe those images. The images that I'm talking about are stereotypes, depicting that the majority of blacks are buffoons or functioning illiterates promiscuous, violent, welfare recipients, indolent criminals. Unfortunately, too many black people buy into that and believe that those stereotypes are true. So you lash out on those individuals that fit those stereotypes. You're basically trying to obliterate those negative images to rid yourself of that self-hate monster that subconsciously stalks you. That's a brilliant hypothesis. Really. But, but with... All due respect, Mr. Williams, I, there's not an African-American person in this country who hasn't been force-fed negative stereotypical images. What do you say? What I'm saying is that you still are responsible for choosing your own battlefield, for, for processing this information. I mean, where was your family? I understand, but that's what I'm saying. Wasn't there somebody who could help you dispel these images, help you process this programming? I couldn't tell my mother what I was doing on the streets. Well, what about your father? What about him? That's it. When I was too out of control for my mother, she took me up to Oakland to live with my father. Stan, this is Stan, your father. Come with me. You wait here? I'll be right back. So the streets became my father. The Crips became my family. But have you ever stopped to think how many young black men you and your family sent to their graves? I understand what you're saying. 
You know, I thought we were doing an interview. You're, you're sitting here chastising me about things. I, I told you. I'm sorry. Listen, if somebody hadn't started the gangs, what we were doing, somebody would have came along and done it anyway. No. Don't you think that if it hadn't been the Crips, it would be something? I told you from the get-go, it was about survival. Survival is why we were here. That, I mean, that's just the way it's been throughout history. Bullshit. Yeah, but you come in here with so many criticisms. I mean, what have you done? Are you doing anything for the community? Or you just reverting back to your little bougie world, trying to walk white, talk white? Why do you white? try to invalidate my blackness? Because of the choices you made? You don't know me. You don't know shit about me. You don't know what I've been through to get where I am. You don't know how hard I work to pull myself up to make something of myself. You don't have any idea. And what did you become? Look at you, the way you walk, the way you talk. Straight in your head. You lost. I may be lost, but I'm free, and you're not. I don't need this. Yes, you do. Guys! See you next week. Strip down. Bend over. Visitor didn't show. Gonna have to send you back. I had a bad rep. I believe the people, because they were afraid of me, they respected me. That was a mistake. Respect cannot be earned by using violence to scare people. Many gangbangers are scared all the time, but they won't tell anyone because they don't want their homeboys to think that they're not down. Gangbangers live by bad rules. Their rules make it okay to be dishonest. Their rules make it okay to use violence against others. Their rules make it okay to put their own lives in danger. But you, you don't have to live by their rules. You can choose to live by new rules.
What's all this? New warden. New system. Mm. Why, well, uh, I saw that everybody had food, so I guess it was rather presumptuous of me. It's a peace offering. I hope you're not offended by it. So what are you doing? You're trying to get charges trumped up against me? What? Assault charges? Because I'm about to assault this food. <laughs> the food that they give us back there is an abomination. I know this is out of the vending machine, but it's uh, gourmet to us. Thank you for your kind gesture. You're welcome. Mm. Mm hmm Is it okay? It's more than okay. I should have brought some Tabasco sauce, well, I you guess. You should have. <laughs> mm, thank you. I read your writing. I was very impressed. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. And that, that, that makes it even easier for, the, for me to ask you this. I need your help. But what do you want me to do? I want to stop it. I want to stop this madness that I created. I want to write a book, children's book. That is great. I, I look thank forward to reading it. So I if I gather information, I can get it to you, you know, to your offices or whatever, where as I come up with other oh, no, no, ideas, no, Mr. Williams, you can help excuse me. me no, Call really. me Stan. Call me Stan. Stan. I don't write children's books. I'm a journalist, and as you know, I'm about to embark on my own book project. Right. I don't have the time. I'm sorry. Let me, I... let me tell you something about time. Yesterday, I was informed that they rejected another one of my appeals. For every appeal that they reject, that draws me closer to death. Who's running out of time? Listen, I don't want to leave my legacy here as simply being the co-founder of the Crips. If I can keep a kid from coming to this place, Ms. Beckman, you're the only one. Barbara. Barbara. You're the only one out there that can help me. Are you playing me? What? If you and your gangster mentality are trying to use me to gain your freedom, I want you to know I will not be manipulated. But if you are sincere about trying to save these kids and right your wrongs and reach out to these young people, I'll do everything I can to help you. Well, I am going to use you and manipulate you. Excuse me? To get some more chicken wings out of that vending machine. <laughs> they told me you didn't have a sense of humor. How are you playing? I was going through your writings and uh, something struck me. You wrote that um, there was a period of time during your gangster days mm -hmm. that you felt your death was near. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was eerie. I just looked up one day and all of my loved ones, which is what we called each other, mm -hmm. had passed away. Raymond, dead, Monroe, dead, Buddha. Mm. Gone, man. So then in a the flash, I saw that I was next. He did? Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. Let's roll, let's roll. They took me to Killer Kane. 
And when I survived that, they said that I wasn't going to walk anymore. Then when I began to walk, there was no turning back. It was a violent and bloody weekend in Los Angeles. In little more than just two hours, six people were Even killed. Even in murder weary South Central Los killed. Angeles, the carnage has been overwhelming. More than 20 people the thing killed. I can't by understand is that why year. some of his young brothers and sisters had to take his life. I know. I know. I know. I know. Trying to put together citywide truce. Crips and bloods, man. Shit's out of control. I know. We got to get these OGs to sit down and talk. Okay, and my role in this would be what? To talk to Tookie. Talk to. Hey, wait. Maybe he can kick something. Talk to the set leaders. Maybe you can approach him on that. I don't really feel like I'm in a position to do that, Tony. No, just ask him. Come on, Tony. I can't just step just into ask this. Just ask him. I'm a journalist. I'm not a negotiator. Barbara! You owe me one. Stan, once you, the founder of the Crips, commit yourself to this piece, loud and clear and in broad daylight, there's no turning back. Once you say you renounce gang violence, say that you are no longer a Crip, you could be a marked man. Well, I'm aware of that. Well, are you ready to take that chance? Listen, if this is going to form a truce between Bloods and Crips and stop the violence and the ravaging of our community, it's not a chance, it's a responsibility. Mark. You think about this. Just as messy as it can be. Yeah, you, you funny. You, you, yeah, you real funny. I hate you on your chin, though. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. I need to talk to you, Charles. I'm on the phone right now, okay? So, yeah, you know, I'm um, was tripping. Get know. off the phone. Give me a second, dang. Shh. Anyways, man. Yeah, um, let, let me call you back. All right. Where'd you get this? So you just go through my stuff now? Who gave it to you? Skip to me. Your father. See, you, you always blame him for Your everything. Your father had his chance and he blew you it. You don't even know him anymore. Oh, no. I know him. You don't know him. Okay, I'm about to bounce. Give, give, it, give it to me. Absolutely not. Give me the gun. Fine. Fine. Keep it. Charles, don't you walk out of this house. Or else what? When you're going to go through my stuff, you're going to invade my privacy? You know what? Dad might have done some stuff in the past or whatever. But at least he respect me. Yeah, well, go and get some of his kind of knowledge. That's where I'm going. What? I mean, I don't know what to do. No, I'd knock his head off. I mean, all this stuff and everything. He, he... Yeah, that's how I would handle it. But you can see what I to see what that got me. I'm worried about him. Well, listen, that's your son. Basically, you're a bow and he's the arrow. If you've aimed it in the right direction, and once you've released that bow, you can't change its destination. But if you've had enough strength to pull that bow, then he will find his way. You know what? All that philosophical crap, I don't want to hear it right now. All right, well, how about these? Do you want to talk about transitive verbs anymore, or do you? All right, let me. Okay. Let's see. The overall message is to show gangbanging as a self-destructive activity that has devastated... 20 years ago, I helped create a gang called the Crips. Today, I'm speaking to you from death row. I never imagined that the Crip gang would spread throughout California, throughout the nation, throughout the world. And I deeply regret the legacy that it left because it left a legacy of genocide, black on black genocide. And I apologize for my part in it, but I am deeply encouraged to uh, see you here today that lets me know that I'm not alone in deeply regretting this legacy and seeing it for what it is. And no one could have a better influence on gang violence or gang culture than gang members themselves. And therefore best positioned to reverse this course of violence, but we must do work. We must 
get out there and we must forge peace. We must stop exterminating one another. We must stop all of this madness because at the end of the day, we, we have only ourselves to blame. We must uh, have a do or die attitude as we were as street warriors to rebuild our culture and to create a new lasting legacy, a legacy of peace. There were Crips and Bloods there who were relatives then and hadn't seen each other for years because they couldn't go to each other's neighborhoods. By the end, they were hugging. I'm telling you, it was incredible. I have a statement from Robert Lee Morgan that I would like to read. On March 27th, the state of California will flood my veins with sodium pentothal, pancuronium bromide, and potassium chloride, causing my death. I have voluntarily abandoned federal appellate review of California's judgment of death. Many have labeled this suicide. It is not. I have lived in prison most of my adult years, nearly 30 on death row. I am a rational man. I do not consider foregoing the raptures of another decade behind bars to be an irrational decision.
I've postponed uh, the book indefinitely. What? What are you doing? I busted my ass selling the Crips book. They're even willing to give you an advance. Now you're just going to throw that away? I'm going to help Stan with his book. Barbara, no company is going to publish a children's book written by a death row felon. That's Forget it. what I'm doing. You know what I think? I think you're becoming too involved with this man. I need an agent, not a therapist. So if you're interested in being that agent, fine. If not, I can stop with the ultimatums. Really. So are you in or out? Fine, I'm in. But I think he's messing with your mind. Titles in the series will include Gangs and Your Neighborhood, Gangs and the Abuse of Power, Gangs and Low Self. This isn't for us. I think we should go. Some of the titles in the series, as we see it, uh, would be Gangs and the Abuse of Power, Gangs and Self Esteem. Gangs and your neighborhood. I'm sorry, Miss Becknell. This is not for us. Why? I don't want to give a platform to a man convicted of murdering four people. What qualifies him to now be a voice that should be heard by my children? Dumb not, quote, non-intelligent. Excuse me? It's something that Stan often quotes in Latin. It means they condemn what they do not understand. Uh, don't go yet, please. Would you explain more of this to me? Well, it would be my pleasure. I should start by explaining to you why we think we should make these young reader books. I think it's very important from all of you. Dan, these galleys have so many typos in them. We, we really have a lot of corrections to make, yeah? But all in all, it's good, yeah? All right, what? Well, well, fourth paragraph? Second paragraph, yeah. Today's book presentation. Gangs and Your Neighborhood, written by Stanley Tiki Williams. When kids gang bang, innocent people get hurt. Sometimes kids, even younger than you, are shot. A homeboy is not a true friend if he calls you a chicken or a coward or a punk. I thought that by beating up people, I was cool and tough. I thought that was the way to get people to respect me. Many gang but I was wrong. abuse their power. I've learned that nothing good ever comes from abusing power to scare Real or hurt power people. Is already inside each of us. Stan, the books are selling in Europe and Africa and Japan. Japan? Yep. Yeah. And Stan? Winnie Mandela has asked to come and visit you. And what if we say no? And the press, whom Miss Mandela's already told about the visit, eats us for lunch. How did this happen? There's books. Apparently, they're quite popular. I must warn you that Stan is rather shy. This is the beginning, rather quiet. Keep talking to him. He'll warm up quickly. Okay. So it's good morning. Other entrance, please, Mrs. Mandela. Well, that's not the way in. We have to search her. They want a full search. I will not. And you won't be allowed to enter. Do you know who this is? Do you have any idea? I'll handle please. Mrs. Mandela. This way, ma'am. Thank you. That is ridiculous. This is, uh... This is a moment of, of, of grandeur for me. I, I, I'm, I'm elevated. I wish, I wish I were a poet. I'm just deeply honored to meet you. No, sir. It is my honor to meet you. The books you have written have moved so many of us. Your words are on the lips of many children in my country. The condition of the youth in the townships of South Africa is the same as that in the ghettos of your country. 
Yes, yes, but I'm being met with opposition. There's some people saying that the subject of gangs is taboo in schools and that maybe I'm not the man to bring the message. They are blinded by fear. But you must continue. Didn't Mandela think about dying while he was incarcerated? Every day. It is what kept him alive. Do not be afraid. Will you sign it for me? Oh, yes, I, yes, Mandela, I will, I will do anything for you. Yes, I will. Ma'am? Oh, yes. Uh, this is just so amazing. Courage. Thank you. Miss Becknell. Hi. First the books, now Mandela. Oh, it was so No, we don't need this today. kind of publicity. It could backfire. What? I'm expecting to hear from the Ninth Circuit. Yeah. I'm trying to keep this man alive. That's my job. You understand? Of course I do. But, Mr. Cates, I'm telling you, these books really make a difference. No, I don't care. They could hurt his case. Now, let me ask you. Do you want the books or do you want the man? What do you mean? His life or his work. I suggest you stop working with him just for the time being. So your relationship with him is obviously clouding his judgment. Miss Becknell, this is Mario Fuhr, member of the CIS Parliament. I had an opportunity to read uh, the books of Stanley Williams. He's the most impressive. Uh, he's quite a writer. Yes. This day serves to remind my countrymen of our commitment to freedom, neutrality, and most of all, humanity. There is, right now, in California, San Quentin Prison, a condemned man. His name is Stanley Williams. Mr. Williams has launched a comprehensive international program to steer youth away from gangs and drugs and violence and imprisonment. This is an outrage! Should our world produce a broken soul? Is it not our duty to let every man on this planet count. Stanley Williams has forged gang truces in his own country and has stopped gang warfare on the streets of Switzerland. Mr. Williams' international campaign to save children and to support a civil society represents an unusual opportunity for a person with street war bona fides to model reform and rehabilitation for troubled youth worldwide. So today, I use the power vested in me as a representative of my country to nominate Stanley Williams, death row inmate, for the Nobel Prize for Peace. Bravo. It's on the net. It'll be in the papers tomorrow. Congratulations, Stan. Barbara. Just be careful out there because there are going to be repercussions. The only repercussions will be a Nobel Prize. I, I hear all that. Just be careful. All right? I will. claims that this nomination is a desecration of the dignity of the Nobel Peace Prize. You know I don't have anything in here. You trying to plant something? Yes, I spoke to Mr. Williams this morning, and he yeah. is pleased and honored to have this nomination. Yeah. Could you hold, please? That Mr. Williams Thank is you. still involved in gang activities. I'm a corrections officer. That's all I know. Is Williams still running the corrections? Yes. Based on what evidence? Based on testimony of fellow inmates. You mean guys are anonymous testimony? Yes. Who the hell are these guys? Cons come in favor, old enemies. Stan, I have given up a lot to help you with your work. If I thought for one minute you were going back into that Listen, world... I'm not a hypocrite. I'm a man of my word. 
Everything that I do, I have committed to the extreme. When I said I was out there and I was going to be a crip, and I started cripping, I said I was going to be the baddest gangster to ever live. And I became that. Through discipline and hard work, I became the king of the crips, and I wasn't afraid to tell the world about that. But I've embarked upon a different journey, a journey of service, a journey of redemption. And I've been practicing that. I don't use drugs, I don't use profanity, no alcohol. Anything that is not righteous, I don't do it. And I've been practicing that for years. Don't you see that? Don't you see that you and my mother are the only two people that I can really trust in here? You've done more for me than anybody in the world. Of course they want to draw a wedge between us. But this is crazy. You are a Nobel nominee and they're cheap trashing you. I wish I could kick that no, bastard's no, no, head. No, no, I, I no, no. Hasira Hasara. What? That means anger brings damage and loss. What? They want you to react. Look at how we're reacting right now. This is what they want. You're smarter than that. You're right. You're right. But you know what? We have the press's ear. I am getting 50 calls a day. We can fight this. We can get your message out there. We're already doing it. Through the bucks. Listen, let me handle this my own way. Okay? And what way is that? I have a disciplinary confinement hearing coming up. I've been in this hole for six years. I know. Six years in solitary confinement, cut off from everything. I know. I'm going to start right there. So what you're telling us is you've changed. I spent my first decade here in a predictable pattern of negative behavior. But during that time, I put myself through years of re-education, teaching myself, unlearning some of my bad habits that may have gotten me here. And I became a man of principle. I also embarked on a project to help children, to kids. And those efforts are coming to fruition. And how do we know that once released back in the population, you will not seek revenge? Revenge is no longer in my vocabulary. My word is the only thing that I have in my life, and my word is bond. I give you my word that I will not. Hello? Yes, yes, I'll accept the call. Stan? Yeah, I, I got good news. Uh, they're going to be moving me out of uh, confinement and moving me into a regular tier. That means more books, more writing supplies, maybe even a, uh, a TV. They're still doing television, right? Bob? That's good, Stan. What's wrong? Barbara? Have you talked to your lawyer? No. So you don't know? What should I know? The Ninth Circuit decision came down. They denied your appeal. We'll go to the U.S. Supreme Court next. No, they, they, um, uh, they won't hear the case. But it can change. Barbara, they're going to move to execute me in the next six months. I've been cutting out all articles on the nomination from the papers. Got a whole file full. Gonna send them to you. 
been getting some phone calls too. Aunt Celia, Cousin Shannon, even Uncle Ray from Baton Rouge been seeing about you on the television. You remember Uncle Ray? Yeah, I think I do. <laughs> Pressman, honey? They called a lot for a few days. I just told them they had the wrong number. Luckily, there's a lot of Williams in the phone book. You doing all right in here? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I um, <clears throat> never really get used to this place in all these years. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if we would have just stayed in Louisiana. I moved us out here because I thought everything would be better. I remember you didn't want to come out here. Went and hid the day we left. And we found you. You jumped up in Grandma's arms and held oh, on to her. I, I didn't do all that. We had to pry you off and drag uh, you to the Greyhound. <laughs> sure didn't have it easy. Who did? Wish I could have kept you from this. Oh, come on, listen. You can't change the past, okay? Regret will only get us so far. Sometimes I sit in here and I think, if this is the path that I have to walk in order to do what I have to do, then so be it. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it with me. I'm gonna take the essence of this back there. Whatever time I have left, I'm gonna be present every moment. Stand. Stand. Spiro, spiro. While I breathe out. focused on this work, all right? Because that's the only thing that matters right now. Okay. Mr. Williams. Ready to move? I came to get the rest of my stuff. I see. You got some more? 
I'm fine, thank you. Ms. Becknell? Yes? Barbara Becknell? That's right. This is for the victims. Hey! Hey! Oh. Hey! What? No! What the fuck? Oh, what you got? Get your ass over here! Oh, no, please. That's the please. blood of the victims of Stan Williams. Let me you support a murderer. I support human rights. What about the rights of the dead? I support a man. What about Alvin Owens' rights? Who has worked every day to stop the killing. A man who's done everything he can to change. They all have rights. You hear me? God is not going to forgive you. You come here and you attack me in the name of God? You're no better than anybody else who uses violence to prove a point. This is not God. I'm not hearing God's voice. God is not about hate and revenge. God is about forgiveness and repentance. No. If you come near me or my family again, I have a legal right to defend myself, and I promise you I will. Now, will you please leave? Oh, honey. It's okay, Mom. Oh, honey. Sorry, right, Mom. We're right. Mm hmm. I love you. No, but I've told you several times, Barbara, that you're gonna have to be careful. I mean, the guy just came out of nowhere, and the next thing I knew, I had blood all over me. Yeah, Lex Teleones. That means eye for an eye. I lived like that for a long time in my life. All right, listen, Bob, I want you to go and do some research for me on peace treaties. Okay. Send me every one that you can find. I'm going to write a document laying out a plan so we can stop this madness. And also, I need to talk to Tony. Bob. Bob. Stan, Tony's dead. T Tony's what? Gunned down. Hey, Mr. Williams. Tuki and these five coming out at the same time. This a mistake? See, she. Got to be a mistake, sir. Tuki will attack him. He's got to. Gang rules. Thank you. 
You no longer have to fear me, my brother. I don't live by gang rules anymore. Violence is no longer part of my life. I won't harm you. You hear me? That's my word. That's my word. bomb attack on a Jerusalem bus killed at least 10 people and injured more than 30, say police. The bomber, a 23-year-old Palestinian man from Bethlehem, boarded the bus shortly. Most in the country agree, as long as there are drugs, there will be gangs. And all they can hope for is to... A 10-year-old boy was killed today while playing in front of his home. The boy was caught in the crossfire of yet another South Central gun battle. 15 people have died this weekend in what has been the bloodiest three days With me, please, Mr. Williams. For what? Just told me to bring you down to processing. I need you to take off your shirt and your pants. Mr. Williams, do you understand the procedures to be carried out? What, what is this about? We've been informed you're to be scheduled for execution tomorrow. I mean, how, 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 how did this happen? I, I, don't, I don't understand. Your attorney missed a deadline to file for an extension. So you, you're going to kill me over technicality? I mean, I'm just doing my job, Mr. Williams. Can't you refuse it? Mr. Williams, do you understand the procedures to be carried out? Yeah, I understand the procedures. I know about the last meal, the priest's viaticum, Brand new clothing to die in, the warden's inquiry on the prisoner's last words, the long walk to the chamber, getting strapped into the chair. Yeah, I know about your procedure. Mr. Williams, let's make this as painless as possible, okay? Painless? What part of this madness is painless to you? What is your religion, Mr. Williams? I don't adhere to a religion. I believe in one God. During the final hour, do you want a priest to be present? I pray to God directly. Who's going to be contacting his next of kin? Those are windows. Okay. Find the defendant, Mr. Stanley Williams, guilty of all he's four dead. counts of murder. Yeah, he's there. Yeah. I had a dream that it was happening. They came to take me out like they had done before. Only this time it was a mistake, but nobody knew that it was a mistake. Oh my God, that's frightening. Bob, listen. 
Every day that I wake up in here, I'm furious, and I pray, I exercise, meditate in order to bring peace. Because I don't want to get used to this. This is not something I'm going to get used to. My neighbors, they sit and they paint their walls orange or blue or green and say, I'll make the best of it, but I'm never going to make the best of it. I don't care if I'm here a hundred years, I'm not going to get used to this. Because every morning I wake up, I know that I'm not supposed to be here. Why do we do good, Barbara? Why do we do good? Do we do good just so we can get back good? Do we do good so we can keep score? God is a scorekeeper and we're hoping that he's writing the things down. We do good because it makes us feel alive. The first half of my life, I was dead. I was dead, but now the second half of my life, I get a chance to live and do something about it. And if I have to die in order to show the meaning, the true meaning of it, then so let it be. And I know that I'm touching people because I touched a man somewhere in a faraway country, and he nominated me for a peace prize. We didn't start out trying to get a Nobel. We were just trying to fight for those kids. And that's what we have to keep doing, fight for those children so they'll have a chance to grow up and be, be somebody, be a, a husband or a wife, have a chance to dream and make some of those dreams come true. I still got fight in me. How about you? Greetings, brothers and sisters. First, I want to congratulate you for being accepted into Miss Barbara's youth program. I understand that you are the best and the brightest, the future of our country. I'll tell you this, that I'm very elated to have this opportunity to be able to answer some of your questions. One at a time. This is not a gladiator school. You will not prove anything in here. This place does not make you a man. Look at me. I want you to understand this too and listen to me well. The moment you begin to make excuses for yourselves, that's the moment that you get on a pathway leading you straight to here. They want you here. They're ready for you here. But look at me. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm not going to let it happen. I don't want to see any of you on your way to this place to spend any time here because this is not a place for you. And what we're going to do, we're going to form a plan amongst all of us. We'll make a vow and say that we will never end up in this situation like I am. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Dear Heavenly Father, we're here knowing that you know all. You're the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega. We sit in here in a situation where we're just asking for your guidance and for your presence and your knowledge to enlighten us. Please, Lord, allow us to take what we have started here, just a small seed, and let this blossom into a flower that everyone can be able to metaphorically come and smell that flower and will be inspired. And then one day we will no longer have to fight in this world be at odds with one another, especially our brother. Dear Lord, I ask that you please allow me to keep my eyes focused on what needs to happen. Take Miss Barbara Becknell and let her be a vessel. You have taken me and caged me as a bird, but you have allowed me to sing and crush these walls and make these walls to, these walls to, to fall down and people will be able to see the dream that I have in my heart. And Lord, if I have to take this and I have to be a sacrifice for you in order for this message to get out there, then so be it. Amen. Brown University professor William Keach today nominated San Quentin death row inmate Stan Tookie Williams for the Nobel Prize for Literature. <laughs> Williams, former head of the Crip Street Gang in Los Angeles, has written a series of award-winning children's books. Williams was nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize last year by Swiss parliamentarian Mario Fair, but lost to uh, UN Chairman Kofi Annan. I made the nomination to honor a body of work that is courageous, truthful, and purposeful. Now back to the news desk.
Thank <laughs> you.